So once that .iso uh, finishes downloading, you want to go ahead and burn it on a DVD. So if you're on a PC, you can use whatever your uh, standard CD or DVD burning software is. Um, it probably has an option like burn disk image or burn ISO. You want to choose that option and then open or import uh, the glitch codec tutorial.iso file you downloaded and then burn it on DVD. Um, if you're on a Mac, you're going to run disk utility. Um, and then in the file menu, you're going to choose open disk image and select the glitch codec tutorial.iso file um, so that it shows up in your list of volumes on the side. And then you're just going to go ahead and choose that and burn that by clicking burn. So why are we doing this? Um, so this tutorial is all about hacking video codecs. And in order to do that, we need a particular kind of access and a particular kind of freedom. Um, and what you're burning is a customized version of the Ubuntu operating system that, that I made for this tutorial. Um, and what, it, what it's going to allow you to do is run that operating system live from the DVD without making any kind of changes to your regular operating system and set up uh, on your computer. Because um, Ubuntu, as opposed to Microsoft Windows or Mac OS X, um, which are commercial or proprietary operating systems, Ubuntu is a GNU Linux distribution, which is an open source operating system. So the first thing we think about when we hear open source is that it's free, and that's true, Linux is free in that you don't have to pay for it. But free here implies also, more importantly, a certain kind of freedom that you, that you have. Because when you buy a commercial or proprietary software, um, you're not really buying it, you're, you're licensing that software. And licensing is, is kind of like leasing a car versus buying a car. When you buy a car, it's yours, and you can paint uh, flames on the side and put spinning rims on it and a crazy sound system, and then when you're bored of it, you can sell it. Um, but when you lease a car, you're given the keys and you can drive it around, but you're, but you're not really authorized to make crazy modifications to it um, and, you're, and you can't really sell it. So this matters to us because we need access to what's called uh, the source code of these, of these video codecs. So uh, when computer programmers um, write software, um, what they create is the source code. And the source code is, is, is computer language, which just like any kind of human language, is something that we could learn to read and write. Um, and then that source code is, is run through a compiler and gets turned into object code, um, which to us looks like gibberish, but to a computer can be run and executed um, like a piece of software. So when computers run or execute uh, a software or an application which, which we can then use, that's the object code. When a programmer writes or makes changes to that um, piece of software, they're working with the source code. So an example of a closed uh, proprietary piece of software is something like Microsoft Office, um, which you're not allowed to make changes to, but you can license, uh, you can be licensed to use it. So in this way, a specific uh, kind of confined relationship um, is sort of imposed on you by the manufacturer's uh, special interests. Um, which is not the case with, with open source software, which you can r run and use, but you also have the freedom to make modifications and improvements on. An example of this would be something like OpenOffice instead of Microsoft Office. And so because we want to hack the source code of these video codecs, we need to have access to that source code and the freedom to hack and tinker and experiment with it. 